On the call this morning, U.S. futures are positive following gains of 1.5% in the Shanghai Composite as China's output increases in August more than expected. German markets rally up with the DAX up nearly 2% as German services and manufacturing growth also improve. And crude oil rallies over a percent on reports that Qaddafi loyalists stage counterattacks in Tripoli. I'm Alex Steele and the morning call starts right now. Good morning. I'm Scott Redley, Chief Strategic Officer with T3Live.com. And I'm Alex Deal with The Street, and together we bring you the morning call. Scott, let's get to the markets here. Started strong on Monday, but then faded. How are you going to measure today's indicated rally to see if it actually has some legs? Yesterday we walked in, the futures were up like 15 handles. Our first instincts were to sell the gap up. Why are we gapping up? And things started to go negative. The banks got hit first, some mm -hmm. high beta tech that's broken, started to sell off. And then we closed, you know, pretty, pretty, I would say near the lows. Yeah. So usually typical bearish action is you open up and you close lower. Bullish action is you open weaker and you gain strength throughout the course of the day. So are you approaching today then from a bearish slant, I guess? Well, usually they don't do the same thing twice. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are going to come in and say, okay, I could just short the open because I made really good money doing that yesterday. So today could be a bit tricky. And I think some traders got caught short. I'm actually a little short you know, in my cash flow account. So I'm not going to do the cost average game. Okay. Okay, I'm going to see if I could fade the open a little bit. But if the stocks hold higher in the first 30 to 60 minutes, this rally could churn all day long. And then we need to look at the chart and test some of the bigger resistance within this lower range. And then you would cover your shorts, I guess, in those first 30 minutes, hour of trading, if it holds higher? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not looking to, to, to take a long-term approach here. We have Jackson okay. Hole at the end of the week. I've been caught and gap and goes. I was just looking for a trade, and it looked like we closed a week that we'd get some follow-through. But follow-through is hard to find in this market. So if you take a quick look at the SPX, let me show you what I'm talking about. First, obviously, the head and shoulders top that gave us an indication that we're going to break 1255 for this move lower. So now I could, the only thing I could say constructive-wise mm -hmm. is that we're still in this lower pivot. We're still holding bigger support. We've been doing a lot of work between 1120 and 1140 besides this small outside day. So now if you take a look here on the resistance side, I would say you know this is the area to watch. I'm going to cover if on a 60-minute basis we can close above 1145. I would say if it gets above this 1155, which I'm not thinking it would do today, there's going to be a big battleground within the middle of this range, which comes in around 1162 to 1170. This is the area that the bears are going to defend because once it takes it back here, this range is more neutral, and then perhaps we get a resolution to the upside. So what I think they wanted to see is some more action in the lower end mm -hmm. for a break lower, but for now, you know, this is going to be that battleground. Now, what do you think is, is moving the markets now? And the reason why I ask is because everywhere I turn, it's always, you know, QE3, the possibility of QE3 and Ben Bernanke talking on Friday's leading markets higher. And I personally have seen absolutely no evidence to corroborate any sort of QE3 rumors at all. So is this just kind of low volume technical trading that we're seeing and we really can't take those fundamentals as seriously? I think it's what, um, August 23rd. Right. And the markets are very oversold. You saw a, a bit of a bounce in, in Europe, right? We saw a bit of a bounce yeah. yesterday, today. Also, mm -hmm. I think on Asia, and I think that people are excited that Gaddafi is finally getting caught. So you have a, a lower end of the range. You have some positive days overseas. You know, you, right. you spin that around and you get a small bounce off the lows because, you know, we, we are 16 to 20 percent off the highs in a lot of indices. Major stocks have had sell-offs of 30 to 40 percent. So in order to break lower, you need a lot of bad news. And right now we've had a small absence of bad move. So the market's floating bad higher. Bad news, so mar yeah, markets go higher. Got it. All right. Well, let's get